Okay, quick Tuesday morning radar update. Just a quick run through these volume leaders today. So we've we've got got a pretty good close in the US last night, didn't we? We are kind of at areas where we might see some consolidation again, even if the mar markets are going higher. So Maybe they want to break the S&P out, though. Who knows? But uh, we'll just keep turning up as we do. End of, d end of day. And uh, see what happens. But, um, yeah, a little gap up. We've, we've had the gap fill on the DAX. We had a few problems on the DAX feed yesterday. And uh, 250's closed. FTSE's just up, drifting back in towards that uh, gap. And what time is it? Yeah, usually you, you, you start to see that... Uh, post gap trade sort of uh, you, you see see stocks sort of pop again at this time in the in the day so before the uh, zombie session through lunch so i'll quickly just have a look at a couple of markets um this is that bitcoin etf i'd like to see some kind of basing action as you know um before even looking at any of those i am watching the stocks and i'm not really seeing very constructive action in the stocks either in the, in the crypto or bitcoin stocks yet uh, obviously we we called this mean trend on you know correction bounce into mean trend back to lows we'll see where it goes from there um should we have a look at that base on cable it's just breakouts sometimes an event usually a process and we've got like a little zone of interest here Moving on from there, let's jump into the commodities. Obviously, you know my sort of point of view on gold. This is when gold was here. When gold was here, I always say this is not where reward to risk is found. This is where reward to risk is found for the gold price on, on the mean trend sort of area. And, and you know... If you could find some good gold stocks, what were breaking breaking out of tight consolidations, yeah, maybe you're finding you're finding some beta out there. But uh, to be honest, the move moving the gold price, a lot of the time it's better, um, unless all the gold stocks fill fill the screens. And and you know, I I, I do trade. You know, I've always traded everything, but uh, commodities, as we say, chiapita. Commodities are usually a pain in the ass. Um, so, yeah, you know, look at the action. The move off mean trend and then choppiness here, there and everywhere. It's pretty usual. It's how they trade. Um, when it comes to oil, you know, we've just bounced in, uh, you know, news trumps technicals, though the trend is still down. And uh, we're not really seeing any oilers either. So, moving on from there, let's just uh, move straight into the volume leaders today and see what we see. So, it is, it's just gone 10. We should have traded 23%, but I've, I've got, you know, I'll put 30% on here. We'll, we'll see quite a few today. We're quite full, actually. I'll order them by sector. And... Uh, Obviously, I've got a slight, you know, a, a trend filter. I don't, I don't look at any stocks what, what are on volume unless they're passing a threshold, rising. You know, they're rising over a certain period, and um, you know, I don't want to. I, I'm, you know, I, I'm not going to find the best stocks in the dumpster diver, am I? Um, even if a stock comes off the lows, I like to do a bit of off piece, don't I? Um, so let, let's just go and look at the lows on a stock. Pick, pick, pick one of the a really choppy one. So today's lesson is even if you pick the absolute low, there, there isn't a chance in a million you, you can hold that stock through to that big trend with any kind of a consistency over the next 100 trades. You might do it on, on one. You know, everyone sells the top by accident sometimes and buys the bottom by accident sometimes. You know, the, rea the reality is there's absolutely, you know, 
There's no, you know, you, you could buy the bottom here, you, but you end up with a lot of dead money as the, you know, even if the bottom is in on there, you can see in the markets now, even if the bottom's in, you end up with a lot of dead money just going sideways and chopping around and, and sending, you know, sending you on a psychological roller coaster. And th this is where trends start. And this, I'll show you this as well. You know, this is 52 week highs. So anyone who bought the dip here, you know, psychologically, investors tend to think that 52 week highs is going to be above where they buy at 52 week lows. Well, this is 52 week lows here. First visit, last chance saloon, we call it. To, to get out and uh, and this is 52 the next time it traded 52 week highs was here first 52 week highs so you know buying 52 week highs when the stock's ready is at a lower price than buying a retrace to 52 week lows you know it's you want some consistency not on you know on the individual idea you want some consist consistency over the next thousand investments you take or trades you take so you know existing here breakouts and then once the switch has <laughs> has swung <laughs> um existing here and ex existing on pullbacks to mean trend is just going to make your life so much easier and you can also pin risk management to that as well because you can put a wrong area underneath it as wide as you want you know in this case you go all the way down here if you wanted but um here you've got nowhere to be wrong you know where are you wrong we're, we're on lows it could just keep going so i run this these screens with, with you know i don't see them rising over a certain time period and it will just it will just show those stocks before they start bumping into six month highs or 52 week highs you'll see six month highs is first and then 52 week highs is second but you know i'm looking for good opportunities not just messy charts uh this is vel so this this one's kind of thin but um it broke out of this big big loose reverse fall base here it's not going to be very high on my, let me just juggle some screens, on my GTRS because we know it's a loss making stock. But if you, it, it's already got a solid forward turnover of 68% year on year. And it's just come out with, was it, um, 100 million deal or something over five years so so basically it's got a hundred percent increase on that full year turnover so that is why this is you know the volume leader of the day 800 percent traded already so so this is why this is today's volume leader um there's a lot of uh posters out there who'll say you know news feeds as well you know the news feeds come up and and say um better than expect you know are going to be, be better than expected but if expected it you know you, you could say it was trading towards 12 million it its forward numbers were 2 million and better than expected could be 3 million so obviously you've got something what's got a huge haircut and it's it's like a dead cat bouncing its turnover you know so so don't get sucked into the those the the people who post you know better than expected this that you know just just look at the numbers the numbers have all the information all the information is in the numbers <laughs> taskmaster um just look at the numbers and and you can see where the the trend of the numbers is is where it's at it's it's kind of one of my pet hates because people who have a position will sell you on this rns and when you read an rns you, you know they always tell you the, the the good points and the good put even though they tell you the good points they it might not be a good point you know expected to beat might 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 just be a, a bounce in negative numbers and and that's not very good is it so you know don't follow the news feeds. Just just get the good data supplier. Get I get I use ShareScope. It's got good data. You know I'm happy with the data I use. Some data some data varies, but but 
you know just get the data get the get the good data the best data you can get and uh look at the numbers it's it's really easy to do anyway moving on off piece twice today oh did i bring that over so yeah you know it's not a gtrs stock but it's it's expected to sort of the turnover is going to fly through the roof isn't it it's speculative and i wish this thing would just delist hurry up and delist it's just awful isn't it moving on yeah this mfx really clean break i know some of my site i'm chewing biting my lip not taking that one but uh got no forward numbers on it but it's working isn't it don't usually take financials can't see much i've got the sun on the screen today Uh, Mitty group trades real choppy this one it has been good to me back in sort of 2012 i think it was it had a nice trending run it was a good swing stock actually it's in this period but it's a choppy one but uh we like a little bit more order in the charts to show interest yeah two oilers in the hole you know, I'll just get on my soapbox here. Everyone is an oil expert, aren't they? But in reality, there are no oil stock trading experts. There just aren't because, because, and, and commodity, they're just so, the, the way they act, you know, I, I like to like them to pass all, all the, so the, they're trading on their own growth as well myself. And, and I've always had best results in ones that are trading on their own growth rather than the stories and, and, you know, the, the drill, you know, calendar and all that sort of stuff. Um, one of my best mates was, uh, he used to have to go out to all the oil, oil uh, All, to, all, all the wells and, and do the wireline logging and um he said you never he said he said we never had a, a, any clue on any of these wells he's you know he, he gave it up a few years ago because he was just sick of getting flown all over africa but he said we're on site doing doing the logging of this data and we said we just never have any clue until we put plug it into the computer no one no one on site has a clue either. It's, it's the reality of it. So when it comes down to uh, commodities especially, and, uh, you know, I still trade them on their own. You know, when we traded AAC, it was in a, a, a real good sort of growth run. And, uh, and then it rolled over and we sold the top. We haven't seen it since, you know. And I did the same with the uh, Gulf Keystone back in 2012 or something. It sold the right near the top. Never, you know, we've seen it once actually. We saw it do a little, little bit of a technical run, didn't we? But uh, yeah, had had all the best results. All, and gems, gem fields. You know, I, I traded that one up from four p. And same, same, same. You know, it's you know trading a little bit more on the actual uh, numbers is always better yeah little zone of interest Th this was a zone of interest and it's broken out and uh it's probably going to get upgrades today it's um it's come out with the quarter on quarter hasn't it normal action in that one moving on so we've got EasyJet. This one, it'll be the same, same, won't it? You'll get a little bit of loose action probably following. Just loss. So have a, have a look into that. It's probably forward looking now. It's probably got, um, has it uh, jumped forward yet? I don't know. 
it looks like a return to growth in my screen but uh, I don't know you'd have to read it I've dropped in chat actually because it has been requested already and that is today's volume leaders there are a few more it's, it's quite a busy market today even though there's not that much really to look at it is quite a busy market there's quite a few in there so that's a good sign so we'll see how this goes on we'll see what's in the end of day screens i didn't get to do a video last night because i was i was out as i mentioned but uh, i will be back at the screens again at uh seven o'clock okay